Well, we are deep into our second season up in the Bundesliga here at Lokomotiv Leipzig and are into the semi-final stages of both the DFB Pokal, where we will take on FC Cologne, as well as the Conference League. We're going to play the first league against Grasshopper Zurich, but potentially, more importantly, with only three games left in the season, we're above RB Leipzig. <laughs> Welcome to episode 83 of the Leipzig Loco with Locomotive Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming today. It is two semi finals. First up, we take on FC Cologne in the DFB Pokal at home and off the back of a clash against Bundesliga champions Borussia Dortmund at home. We take on Grasshopper Zurich in the first leg of our Conference League semi final. So, if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but off the back of yesterday's episode which was the quarterfinals of the conference league where we did just get past rz from the netherlands if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner we have just played one game in the bundesliga it was away from home we didn't stay struggling by a leverkusen thankfully picked up a good win in this game by three goals to one. We won't show you the highlights because it might take a little while and we have got some big games coming up in today's episode. But as you can see, quite an even game stats wise, but Nicolo Amadori continued his great form in that competition, picked up two goals nice and early and Anhalo also picked up one. Just before halftime, we did concede late from Harvey Vale, but thankfully did hold on and picked up a 3-1 win. And with some other results that did happen in and around that match day, it did mean we moved all the way up to 6th on the Bundesliga table. So we are now currently in a Europa League qualifying spot. And we do have the goal differential advantage over RB Leipzig at the moment. We might actually have a chance of finishing above those guys on the Bundesliga table with only 3 games left. In the season on that most recent match day, they drew with Cologne, while Eintracht Frankfurt, the team who were just above us come the end of yesterday's episode, they lost to Hertha Berlin at home. So some really good results for us there. You'll also notice that Dortmund have stormed to the title with a couple of games in hand. Bayern Munich actually not yet guaranteed for Champions League football, so that is quite interesting. Bayern Munich, their manager might be in a little bit of trouble come the end of this season. In Julian Nagelsmann, albeit there is a chance for RB Leipzig and Eintracht Frankfurt as well as those teams in behind, like Mainz in particular, to make up some points on us in the game that we're going to play off camera in today's episode, because we take on the champions in Dortmund, albeit Hoffenheim Freiburg is an interesting game above us, and also going forward today it is Eintracht Frankfurt who take on Wolfsburg away from home, so that's hardly an easy game for them either, so hopefully at least we can stay in one of those European qualifying spots. But first up today, we do focus on the domestic side of things with the DFB Pockel. We take on FC Cologne, those guys all the way down in 14th. They are in a bit of a rough patch of form, but their best recent results have been that draw against RB Leipzig and a win over Gladbach in the league. But around that, they have been suffering defeat and to teams for the most part who are below us on the Bundesliga table, so I'm hopeful at home that we can pick up a win here and make our way through to our first DFB Pockle final, albeit I do have an injury update off the back of yesterday's episode, and things have got slightly better, but also in a weird way, kind of got worse, because we have lost our star striker domestically anyway in Nicolo Amadori. This was a training injury that happened off the back of his two goals that he did score against Bayer Leverkusen, and he is out for two to four weeks with a calf strain. It did actually happen in that game. Must have been an orange injury, but that is not ideal. And it does mean in the Conference League, especially just like the situation with Benjamin Bushawari going in to yesterday's episode, we are now down to one first team striker. And that is Matty White. It does mean that we have called up Carlos Pimenfell from our under 19s, the youngster that we did sign earlier this season. We'll just go down and find him. There he is, concernedly do a good job for us domestically, but unfortunately not registered for the conference league. So that does probably play into some of our selection decisions coming up in today's episode to make sure that Matty White doesn't get injured because that could really stuff us up for the remainder of the conference league. But we have got some players back off the back 
of yesterday's episode. Tom Gale is back, Mikel Mastis, Danielle Cueto as well. Paolo Cesar also back and Jordan Xerxes got a brief injury and is back from that. So we have been dealing with quite a few injuries. Thankfully, have got more players back than we've lost, but still the players that we have lost are out for a little while and also quite useful for the Conference League in Amadori Bushuari as well as Falio Alte at centre back. But hopefully this is a game that we can be winning and as I said, make our way through to our first cup final of the save, albeit Kelowna, a team that we do sometimes struggle against. So this could be a bit closer than you might expect based on the league positions. In terms of team news, we've got Sicker at right back for this game. With it being a domestic competition, we're going to rest Votchin while we've got the chance. We've also chucked in Amadou in place of Hitado. Unfortunately, Tom Gale still quite unfit coming back from injury and Hitado is quite injury prone. We're going to chuck Paolo Cesar at left back, get some fitness under his belt. Benedetti over Escobar as he's quite injury prone. And of course, we have got Pim and Bell up front. Do not want Matty White to be getting an injury, but he is on the bench just in case we do need to use him. We'll tell the guys that we want them to keep their good form of late going and hopefully make our way through to our first DFB Pockle final, especially seeing as the semi final is at home, continue our good form. And hopefully that does mean that we can continue that going into that away leg, that first leg of our conference seg semi final. And also hopefully. That Dortmund game, albeit, might be a heavily rotated team in that game. It does look our toughest one left this season. There are Cologne, they are going with a 4-3-3 and we'll get the action underway here. But it's fair to say that is our toughest Bundesliga game left. Off the back of that, we take on Freiburg. That's not easy either. Those guys up in fourth. And then on the final day of the season, we take on Mainz. And they are still right in the hunt for European football as well. So our last three games... Not easy at all, so thankfully we have picked up some points before we get into the nitty gritty end of the season, especially still being in both the DFB Pockle and the Conference League. There, Amadou goes down inside the box, no penalty. We do still have the ball here inside of the final third. Squares that one nicely for Pimentel. He might pick up a goal in his first start on camera for Lokomotiv Leipzig in the senior team. We're just waiting here for a VAR check. And someone there is offside. It was Amadou too, which is very disappointing. Pim and Fell, 11th goal of the season. Most of those must have come from our under-19s. Just offside, but unfortunately, it is a correct decision. Still nil all coming up to the 20-minute mark. And now Blume has picked up a yellow card as per usual. So Manuel might be coming on for him at halftime. And also Paolo Sais has picked up an orange injury, having just come back from one. We'll just check on that. Might be a safe option here to take him off, especially as he's another player who we could use in the conference league, so Ryan can come on for him, and off the back of that, there is a highlight, not actually sure if that substitution has taken place yet, can just see the uh, still making his way from the field, might not have gone through, so we might be down to 10 men for this highlight, hopefully it does not prove costly like it did a couple of episodes ago against Bayern Munich, a nice ball there for Silva, does get in behind, but thankfully drags that shot wide, that would have been a frustrating goal to concede while well down to 10 men, especially in defence. But thankfully now Ryan does make his way onto the field. But Cologne here getting on the front foot late in this first half. They have the ball inside the box here for Kjagard. Tries to get a shot off, but thankfully it's blocked. We clear it away. Asuki ties things up, but thankfully that was the highlight. Not too dangerous off the back of getting some bodies in the way of goal. But as you can see, Cologne have been on the front foot, albeit just before half time. We do have a goal kick here. Looking to make our way out from the back. Camillo plays that one up to Ryan, who has come off of the bench. Hopefully, he'll be okay to last the remainder of this game. Ideally, this game would finish inside 90 minutes with our big schedule at the moment. We don't want any extra time. Nice ball over the top there, though, for Pim and Bell. Big chance just before half time. Just drags that one wide. He's put himself in some good positions, but is on a 6.4. That feels a bit harsh, having tucked one away from when Amadou. Was offside, but that was a pretty even first half. Cologne have had the better chances, slightly in control, but thankfully we are still in this game. Manuel will come on for Blume at half time. I think we'll leave Pim and Bell out there for now and just hope that he improves early stages of the second half. We can bring on White if we need to, but as I said, that would not be an ideal situation. Hopefully Pim and Bell can do the job for us while Amadori is out so we can save White up. All the continental competitions, but we'll get stuck into the second half still locked up at nil all and hopefully put out a bit of a better performance, get more shots off and hopefully put one in the back of the net. As I said, extra time would be a bit of a disaster, especially 
for that Dortmund game in particular. That would definitely mean we would rotate heavily for that one. But coming up to the hour mark is Anhalo down to a red heart. So Musa can come on for him. And also Pimimpel now down to a 6.3. So Matty White can come on there. Sicker on a 6.5. We might leave him out there just for now. But Votchin could get some late minutes if that rating does drop any lower. But so far it's been a very quiet second half as we make our way into this last half hour. We have evened up the shot somewhat. But both teams are not getting very many on target. And about to make our way into the last 20 minutes. And Sicker is still on a poor rating of 6.4. So I think that's what we might do with our last substitution of regular time. Botchin will come on for him. And hopefully we can pick up a goal late in this one. Otherwise, that would mean extra time. And as I said, that would not be ideal. Especially with that big fight going on for the European spots. In the Bundesliga last 10 minutes now of this game, nothing has happened in the second half so far, albeit as I say that, we have the ball here inside of the final third. Krasnicki starts to cut inside, does get a shot off, but Kasten covers that one pretty safely at his near post. Still nil all, very even game, but unfortunately our shots, not nearly as much XG as the opposition. Yeah. And now Daniel Cueto has picked up a red injury, and we don't have any subs left at least. Until extra time, so for the moment, we're going to have to play without a cam. Hopefully, we can cling on here and take this one to extra time now. I know I said it wasn't ideal, but at least now, we could still make our way through to a final and can bring on someone in his place, and that would be Xerxy. And I guess that's going to be our sub going into the first half of extra time, even though it technically isn't for a player who is on the field. We might try here and bring on Hitado and see if that works in place of maybe a Camillo. We'll just see if we can do something here. In fact, maybe Escobar for Benedetti is a good idea, but unfortunately that Xerxes one does count, so that's a bit frustrating. Going back to 11 men with our substitution, heading in to extra time, but we do have extra time. That game wasn't up to much, unfortunately. We didn't create very good chances, and Cologne had some, but to be fair, we blocked most of them. But thankfully, some highlights here early in extra time. We don't want this to go to the lorry of a penalty shootout, and a good chance here for us on the counter-attack. Xerxy picks out Musa, just makes his way inside the box, plays that one back to Ryan, and for Benedetti gets it back, and Ryan with a shot, his first goal of the season, and it's an absolute screamer from our Brazilian left back. It's his first goal for the club completely, and what a time to do it, just inside the start of extra time. Off the back of that, we'll put some players on some more defensive duty, so hopefully we can hold on for extra time and also will tell our guys to be more disciplined. But that is a great start to this period of extra time. Ryan of all people scores a brilliant goal to put us 1-0 up and hopefully that's the goal which will send us through to a DFB Pockle final. Ideally that might be against Wolfsburg. They're a team we've got a good record against so far this season but also would be funny if Fine did not pick up a single trophy this year. But what a finish from Ryan after getting that ball back from Benedetti to go 1-0 up eventually, albeit there is a highlight here right from the restart. Hopefully, don't concede immediately. That does happen often in domestic games. And we are quite late in this one. Good work there from Manuel to win that ball back for us, though. Now, Xerxes plays that to Benedetti, looking over the top there for Krasnicki. But unfortunately, he is very, very tired at this stage. Can't quite win the race to that ball. And now, Cologne win it down the other end. It's a good ball in there for Lau Costa. For some reason, Camillo or Amadou there. Couldn't quite stop him. He puts it away, and I'm pretty sure he's onside. And indeed, he is. So unfortunately, all those changes we just made are going straight into the bin. We'll go back to our usual style of play. And it's back to one all immediately off the back of taking a lead in this game, which is very frustrating. But as I said, has been happening quite a bit in domestic games. Also, we'll tell our guys not to be more disciplined. Hopefully, that means we can get on the front foot a bit more yet again, but unfortunately this goal comes from this miss here, one by Cologne, and then Costa gets past someone there, actually almost goes through Camillo, that looked a bit dodgy, but beats a visit in goal, that makes it one all, also just realised I should have been staying Griffiths for this game, so it's a bit of a boo-boo from my part, maybe we'll need to play him against Dortmund, but off the back of that equaliser, now we are down the other end a few minutes later, unfortunately lose the ball off the back of that throw-in, and Cologne here do get a chance to try and play out from the back. If they go on to win this game, that would be very frustrating. If we're going to take a game to extra time, I want to win it. 
but unfortunately don't quite link up there with Musa Orbi at White. Good work there to get that ball back for us. Now Benedetti finds the goal scorer and Ryan in the bit of space down this left-hand side. Unfortunately loses out on the ball and it is here Cologne who try and make their way into the opposition half. Cost of the goal scorer for them just holds things up on this near side. It is Geiger tries to play a ball over there for low on that far side. What are they up to here? Although that's good from Votchin to win that ball back for us. Now Krasnicki, can he get us on the counter-attack? Manuel just keeps that ball. Xerxes plays that one forward for Maddie White. And he'll beat the goalkeeper. Sneak that one inside that near post from our angle. His 19th of the season. Thankfully, he can score goals not just in Europe, but also in the cup off the back of that. We'll tell our guys to be more disciplined. But I think this time... That might be all that we do, and thankfully, we were not leveled up for too long in this period of extra time. Manuel actually does really well there to keep that ball and keep the counter-attack going, and Matty White just puts that one through the eye of a needle. It was a really small gap there. Thankfully, found the back of there, and it does look like here we might be up by two goals to one when we do get into half-time of extra time, and indeed, that is the case. We'll just get through here and get into the second half of this extra time period. In fact, there's a highlight here immediately from the restart. Hopefully can hold on to our advantage and don't have to take this one to a penalty shootout. As I said, if we're going to be playing extra time in games, I'd like to win it. And Musa does get in behind the Cologne defense there, albeit plays it back to Ryan Benedetti and Berserks. He picks out Votchin. He tries to take on a shot. It does float up. Musa can't quite get his head on the end of that one. Now Jata with a chance to get Cologne on the counter attack and cost of the goal scorer is on the ball. He picks up Vast, Geiger, and lots of space in the center of the field. Lots of space out left, and they eventually find it here. Low tries to square that one there for Lubizic. It's a bit of a mess inside the box, but thankfully we clear our lines. That is that highlight still up by two goals to one. It's almost time now for us, I think, to start time wasting just a little bit more, maybe wait until the last five minutes of this extra time period, but we could probably go a bit sooner, so I think we'll start to do it now, we'll slow down our tempo a little bit, also shorten our passing directness and start to time waste, also tell our goalkeeper to slow the pace down and get those player roles a bit more defensive like we tried to do off the back of taking the lead earlier in this game. Hopefully it works this time with only six minutes left, as you can tell, very even game in Cologne XG wise, have actually been the better team and also had a bit more position as well, but thankfully it looks like we've just done enough in extra time and we have to pick up a 2 1 win. Cologne will feel a bit dirty about that one, but to be fair, they've effing us a few times in the league this season and we are through to our first cup final of the save. The DFB Pockle, not too sure yet who it will be against Wolfsburg or Bayern Munich, but thankfully make the most of what was quite a kind semi final draw and we make our way through to our first cup final of the save, as I said, off the back of a 2-1 win against Cologne. We'll just get through this post-match interview and see exactly who we will be playing against, but good goals in extra time there. Scored by Ryan at left back, of course, and then Matty White to send us through Bayern Munich. It took extra time for them as well, but they are also going through to the final, so it is going to be Lokomotiv Leipzig versus Bayern Munich in the DFB Pockel final. They'll be coming up probably at the end of the week. But hopefully off the back of this, we can also win in our first leg of the Conference League semi-finals away at Grasshopper Zurich. And we are back about to take on Grasshopper Zurich in the first leg of that Conference League semi-final. But before then, we did take on the champions Dortmund in the Bundesliga. This one was at home. Of course, we bet them away from home earlier this season and got off to a flying start here. Three minutes in, Tunde Musa gave us a lead, which was surprising with a rotated squad. But unfortunately, at the hour mark, Dortmund turned into set piece FC. Jude Bellingham there grabs a goal to put them in front shortly off the back of a corner goal. And they did score one from open play. But even then, it did come through a header there from Thiago Guedes. So they did put us to the sword late in this game. We do suffer a 3-1 defeat. A bit unfortunate because for a while there it looked like we might actually get some unexpected points from that game. But unfortunately, it is a 3-1 defeat to the Bundesliga champions, albeit looking at the stats. That's pretty well justified. As you can see, we did very little off the back of that goal, which we did score early through our young left winger, also assisted by our young Colombian striker as well. So it was quite a good goal in terms of the personnel who were involved. But unfortunately, that does mean now, going into our last two games of the Bundesliga season, we are back down to 7th. RB Leipzig are above us, and Eintracht Frankfurt and Mainz as well. 
only one point behind us, albeit goal differential we do have over mine. So it's a very tight race in the Bundesliga, and we are going to be juggling that a little bit with, of course, the Conference League semi-finals, which are about to start, and we are taking on Grasshopper Zurich. But before then, a bit of an injury update. Unfortunately, Daniel Cueto went off in that previous game, and it was a serious one. He is out with a twisted ankle for five days to two weeks. He will miss both legs of the semi-final against Grasshopper Zurich. So that does mean it's another position where we are quite weak in terms of first-team quality players. Jordan Zerxi now will really be our only decent option for the semi-final coming up, albeit we do have some youth players who we have called up from the under-19s, but still not really of the same quality as someone like Daniel Cueto. But thankfully, Zerxi has been in some decent form. Grasshopper Zurich, we looked at these guys at the end of yesterday's episode. Actually, a lower reputation team than the teams we've beaten in the round of 16 in the country mates in Luzerne, who are a long way above them in the league and also in the team that we beat yesterday in RZ. So based on that, you'd like to think this is a game that we can win, albeit their recent form is actually quite good. So we'll see how things go, especially in this first league away from home, where so far we have bottled things late in the previous knockout rounds, having 2-0 leads and getting run down in the second half, taking a two-all scoreline back into the home league, where thankfully in both leagues so far, we have picked up two one wins. Hopefully this time we can do things just a little bit more comfortably. And if we pick up a big win in this first league as well, it might influence the games that we do come back for in tomorrow's episode. As I said, if we can pick up a good win against these guys, we might be playing two Bundesliga games in tomorrow's episode to wrap up the season. Otherwise, of course, we will show you guys what goes on in the second leg of the semi-final. In terms of our starting lineup for this game, we've got Cesar at left back and Benedetti at the deep line playmaker. Those are because both Ryan and Escobar are quite injury prone. Of course, Zerxi does come in for the injured Daniel Cueto. But apart from that, it is our first choice European team that we have been playing for most of the season. Also, Ivizic is back. He sat out that Dortmund game after I did stuff things up playing Griffiths. In that DFB Pockle semi-final also, he was quite injury prone as well, still is, but hopefully can get through these European ties and also the remainder of the Bundesliga season. As I said, hopefully we pick up a good win here and that does mean that maybe we can put out some youth players in that second leg of the semi-final so we can then focus on the Bundesliga and trying to hold on to a European qualifying spot. Of course, it does now mean being in the DFB Pockle final, if we win that, we do get a group stage spot for the Europa League, and of course that would be the case as well if we could win the Conference League final, but it would be nice to have a safety view of some European football through our finishing position in the Bundesliga. There we're Grasshopper Zurich, they are going with a 4-2-3-1 just like us, there's our team. We'll just see the subs, as you can see quite a few youth players with all those injuries that we are carrying. We'll get stuck into the action and hopefully this time can pick up a win in the away league, albeit Justin Blumet picks up a very early yellow card. He might come off at halftime as per usual this time for a scene bullet. Now Fafana there does get the ball. Did think he might be offside, but thankfully Camillo does clear that one away. But it does look like the home team here are on the attack early. And Ibizic gets beaten at his near post. And for the first time in the knockouts, we are behind. 1-0 early here at Grasshopper Zurich. Was not expecting that. Thought this team might be a bit weaker than Luzern, and especially RZ, but Boscovic here, great individual effort there, I think it hits the post before Ibizic can make a save, some pretty poor defensive work there, and we go 1-0 down early, which definitely was not the plan in this first leg away from home, we have struggled in these away legs a little bit so far, but usually it's been the last half hour or so, when we have got pegged back, albeit now down the other end here, for a free kick of our own in Hurtado, who was a little bit at fault for that goal that we did concede, didn't quite get out to his man. He gets on the end of that unhello free kick and puts that one away nicely in that top left corner. And thankfully, we're not behind for long. The goalkeeper there might just slightly be off his line, but still, that's a very good headed finish there by a young Colombian centre back. Actually, was 10th on the next gen list. Also, Sicker 41st on that list. Albeit now we go down the other end, it is a free kick for Grasshopper Zurich. In a very dangerous position. It comes off the post. And then Vochin brings someone down. It might be a penalty. In fact, it's a corner. It did just feel like for a minute, play stopped. So thankfully, we did deal with that danger somewhat. Still locked up at one all. But that was a very dangerous position for that free kick. Now, Ivizic comes out and claims the corner. We just calmed down a little bit. But one all in the beefy. Grasshopper Zurich are giving us 
quite a bit to think about so far in the first half of this Conference League semi-final. It's kind of expected, I suppose, at this stage of the competition. But it does make me worry about the final if we get that far, if we are struggling to deal with teams like this, that could be a bit of a concern, but not much has happened off the back of that free kick chance. And we go into the sheds locked up at one all. To be fair, most guys out there are playing decently. Matt White on a 6.5. That is a bit of a concern with no Amadori. But we are holding the ball quite well. Position's quite good, but shots and shots on target. We are getting dominated a bit here, so that's a concern. We'll bring on Bullock in place of Blomay, hey, but that will be our only sub at half time. As I said, the ring of Manny White is a concern. We'd have to bring on someone like Tonda off of our bench if that was going to be the case if we took him off during the second half. But hopefully he does improve as he has been so good for us in Europe so far. But of course, these days a little bit of a heavier workload with no Amadori, but we'll get stuck into the second half. And thankfully, there is a early highlight here in our favor of Sam Bullock on the ball, takes his time, plays that one back to Hitado, the goal scorer. He plays that one back forward to Racine. Now Benedetti, nice ball over the top there for Anhalo. Good early chance, but unfortunately, that one comes off the base of the post, just misses the target, and we are still locked up at one all, but it does look like starting to get on the front foot just a little bit more, albeit another very dangerous position here for a free kick to Grasshopper Zurich. Thankfully, this time, we block that free kick but Oglinek gets on the end of it somehow and puts it away. We're going to berate our guys off the back of that. We have now fallen behind twice in the semi-final. And we don't usually play that well in the second half of these away games. 2-1 down. This is a bit of a concern. Grasshopper Zurich could stun us, especially if we don't get the job done at home. And what is probably going to be a game now in tomorrow's episode, not going quite as I was hoping, where we could focus on the Bundesliga games. And also, unfortunately, Matty White is down to a 6.4. Also, Bullock has picked up a knock. I don't think we'll take him off just yet. But with White on that 6.4, Tonda Levich can come on for him. He's a player who did come through our youth and take a fairly promising striker. But certainly not of the same standard. But on 6.4, probably a good idea to take him off. And also, Paolo Cesar on a 6.5 Ryan can come on for him and hopefully that just helps us potentially get a goal back in this game I would ideally at worst like a two all score line going in to that home league like we've gotten from those last two legs and with about 25 minutes left there is a throw in here in our favor inside of the final third albeit Benedetti plays that one back to Hitado but going into that second leg behind would not be ideal again we look for Anhalo there at that far post can't quite find him they try and get on the attack there do Grasshopper Zurich but thankfully it was that time Camillo who dealt with that danger, I believe. It was now Bullock and lots of space in the center of the park. He picks out Benedetti. Nice ball there for Ryan. This time sets up Unhello. And this time Unhello does hit the target. Ryan having a pretty good episode today. Got that goal in the DFB Pockle semi-final in extra time. And then sets one up for Unhello. And we are back locked up at two all. And I would not be that bad with that scoreline now, having been down twice. In this game, it's a good finish there from Anhalo, quite like Xerxes in yesterday's episode in that Conference League semi-final second leg. And we are locked up now at two all about to make our way inside these last 20 minutes. Just checking on player fitness, Xerxes now is down to a red heart. So with that in mind, we might have to bring on one of our youngsters again for him, albeit Sebastian Escobar can play the cam role, so it might not be a bad idea to use him here for the latter stages of this game, even though he is quite injury prone, trying to get as many of those good players out there as we can to hopefully grab a winner late in this one, albeit it would feel a little bit harsh on Grasshopper Zurich based on their performance so far in this game, just checking on player fitness a few minutes later, and now Vochin down to Red Heart will bring on Luca Campanelli, because our bench options now in terms of the midfield are a little bit weaker, so that will be our last sub, and we are now on the attack here with 10 minutes left, Unhello has the ball inside the box, can he grab a second goal, tries to square that one, but someone doesn't quite link up, and now Grasshopper Zurich here with a really good chance on the counter-attack, Chopper Field has the ball, he plays that one on for the striker, and Aaron Akale, and we are going into the second leg behind, albeit it's been blown for offside, we'll wait here for the replay, and that is very debatable, much like the Matty White goal from that first league against RZ in yesterday's episode. That is a very debatable call, but thankfully that one does go in our favor, and we are still locked up at 2 all. We make our way now inside the last couple of minutes of this game. We'll tell our guys to hopefully 
get a bit more out of them with that shout, but it does look like, yet again, it's a tool draw in a first league away from home in the Conference League. That's a bit disappointing overall, because these guys are not as good as the teams we've taken on previously in RZ and in Luzerne, but having been down twice in that game, not too bad, and also that late goal to Akale, which was ruled out, did look very, very debatable, but as I said, one of those went against us in yesterday's episode. Hopefully, we can go back home tomorrow and yet again do enough to pick up a win and make our way into the Conference League final, which probably will be against Roma based on that scoreline after the first league. They were up 3-0 over Athletic Bilbao. But unfortunately, again, we can't get the job done in the first league of a Conference League tie. We are going back home locked up at 2-all with Grasshopper Zurich. So a bit of a disappointing result there from that second game of it today's episode. But as I said, having gone behind twice in that game, I will take that. And hopefully, like in the last couple of rounds, we can pick up a win at home and make our way through to a Conference League final, as I said at the moment. Does look like that will probably be against Roma, but that will do it. For today's episode, we're through a DFB Pockel final against Bayern Munich, and hopefully tomorrow we can get the job done in the second leg of that Conference League one, and also we might have to focus a little bit on the end of the Bundesliga season. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. As I said, tomorrow we'll come back, obviously, play the second leg of this Conference League semi-final, but because we didn't get the job done quite as comfortably as I was hoping for in that first leg, we won't be able to focus quite as much on the last couple of games of the Bundesliga. Ideally, we'll finish this season come the end of this week already. It's been a bit longer than I would be hoping, but obviously we are playing a lot more games this season. So we'll come back first up, take on Grasshopper Zurich, hopefully beat those guys at home as per usual for us. And off the back of that, we'll play our last game in the Bundesliga against Mainz before then. We take on Freiburg there in fourth. So it's going to be a very tight race for Europe. If we win both our Bundesliga games, we'll definitely have European football. But if we don't, there is a chance that one of Eintracht Frankfurt or Mainz could go above us. And that then would mean we need to win one of those finals, which hopefully we will find our way into. At least at the moment, we've definitely got a chance in the DFB Pockel, albeit it is against an angry Bayern Munich having missed out on the Bundesliga title, but some big games coming up in tomorrow's episode and also in the episode off the back of that, which hopefully will include a couple of finals, but we'll come back tomorrow for Grasshopper Zurich and our last Bundesliga game, which is against mine. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.